In Peter Schiff from Euro Pacific Capital. Always love having Peter on the show. Want to talk to him about the Fed meeting kicking off, talking about oil, its impact on the markets. Of course, we'll mention gold. Peter, great to have you on the program. Hey, great to be back. And, you know, you guys are missing the big picture when you're looking about oil because this is not an oil story. Right? Oil is not the only market that's been floating on a sea of uh, cheap money. Right? It's QE that propped the oil price up in the first place. But quantitative easing propped the stock market up in the U.S., the real estate market. Right. It's created this phony recovery. And so oil prices are going down, but stock prices, real estate prices are going to come down for the same reason. Right? We are headed back to recession. The market is pricing in an end of quantitative easing. And all of these assets that the, that the Fed inflated are going to deflate Peter, right? until the Fed comes back with QE4. Yeah. You bring up some great points. And actually, I'm not going to fight you today. I was speaking to Anthony Grisanti, who's obviously not on the show today. Um, and he was saying the same thing this morning. We had this conversation about bubbles. And could we potentially sort of you know, be in the situation where another bubble has, has formed and the decline that we're seeing in crude oil is going to pop the stock market bubble? Um, do you think that's what's happening here? No, I, I don't think crude is the pin to pop that bubble. If crude is a bubble because of cheap money, if oil prices were artificially inflated by the Fed, well, so were stock prices and real estate prices. So all these bubbles are going to burst because of the same pin, which is the Fed withdrawing the stimulus. And, you know, people right. are talking about how falling oil prices are going to help the consumer. Well, look, oil prices fell from $150 a barrel down to $32 a barrel in 2008. That helped the consumer, too. But it right. didn't stop uh, the financial crisis. It didn't stop the Great Recession. Look, when real estate prices went down, that helped the consumer, too, because now the consumer can buy houses for less money. But Let's... you had all this leverage that had been built up during the Fed-induced mania. So okay. the same thing is happening now, and you're whistling past the graveyard if you think what's happening is good news. Let's talk about the Fed tomorrow. Janet Yellen is going to give another press conference. There was, um, you know, some speculation that she may sort of change some of the language as what, you know, we've seen in the past few months. People are talking about rates being raised potentially next year. Now they're saying they don't think the Fed can raise rates. What are you expecting to hear from her tomorrow? Well, you know, I've been expecting the Fed to backtrack from its talk about rate hikes. I mean, I know it's all bluff. I know they, they can't raise rates, so they bring about a worse financial crisis than 2008. But the Fed can't admit that, so they have to pretend that they can raise rates so they can keep this whole con game going. They have to keep a bid in the dollar by, by pretending that they actually have an exit strategy. But I've been saying all along that if they actually tapered, they would have to have an excuse to untaper. Maybe this is going to be it. I don't know when they're going to tip their hat. But they're going to have to come clean about launching QE4. Because if they don't do it, we're going to have a much worse recession and a much worse financial crisis than the one we had in 2008, 2009. Right. But I'm sure it takes a few more meetings before, you know, they potentially get to that level if it is something um, that they are potentially considering. But I want to shift gears and talk about gold for a moment because it seems like the perfect storm for gold. We've had this conversation before. Um, oil prices are tanking. The stock market seems to be teetering a little bit. People are worried about a lot of the points that you have uh, made. And so I would expect them to sort of safe haven buy gold right now. Yes, we're over 1,200, but why isn't it going higher? Well, there's still a lot of negative sentiment in the gold market, but, you know, the gold market hasn't gone lower. Gold is still higher in 2014 than it began the year, and most experts thought it was going to fall this year. It hasn't. And, of course, in terms of other currencies, gold has had a very, very strong year. It's just that from a dollar perspective, it hasn't. And, in fact, if you look at the stock markets around the world, you know, there are over, over 60 stock markets and I think not even a dozen of them have outperformed gold so far in 2014. So for all the negativity, gold is hung in there. But right. you have a lot of speculators that are still short this market trying to push it down. But I would say that's probably the most dangerous trade out there. People are going to lose a lot of money on the short side of gold and silver, for that matter. When this market turns, it is going to turn, and it's going to take no prisoners. Okay. Uh, Scott Nation's question for Peter. I do. Peter, I, I give you credit, if not for nothing else, for being consistent. But yep. how in the world do you reconcile that everything that's been pumped up, thanks to QE and thanks to our Federal Reserve, is going to come crashing down? You mentioned housing, the stock market, and crude oil. But how is it that gold, if you will, is going to avoid that? How is it that gold is Teflon? Well, first of all, gold has already come down from 1900. So gold has had a pretty big move from its high, right? So gold is not right on the highs like the U.S. stock market. So you've already had a discount. 
But we have printed a lot of money, and I believe the Fed is going to come back with QE4. If I didn't think QE4 was coming, if I actually believed that Janet Yellen uh, was going to raise interest rates uh, and shrink its balance sheet the way she pretends she's going to do, then I would be bearish on gold. But I would be more bearish on some of these other assets, which I think would fall even harder than gold. It's because I know that the Fed is bluffing. It's because I know they're, they're not, they have no exit strategy, because exit is impossible. They're going to do QE4. The, ultimately, what's going to collapse is the value of the dollar. That's, the Fed is going to keep printing dollars to prop up assets until nobody will buy the dollar anymore. I mean, people are looking at the so Russian Peter, ruble. So, Peter, if you're more... No, that, that's, the Russian, that, that's nothing compared to what's going to happen when we have a dollar crisis. And think about this. They just raised interest rates to 17% in Russia. How do you think the U.S. economy is going to handle 17% interest rates here if the Fed is forced to do that because the dollar is collapsing? Scott, you wanted to follow up. I just, Peter, so you say that you're more bearish these other products, these other commodities. Does that mean you are now bearish gold, even if it's just a little bit? No, no. If I thought the Fed was going to raise interest rates and shrink its balance sheet, if I believed what the Fed was saying, then I would be. But because I don't believe what they're saying, I know what they're going to do. Right? They are going to come back with QE4. As soon as they see this phony recovery fading, as soon as they get a good look at the GDP numbers that we're going to get in Q4 and Q1 from 2015, when they start to see the unemployment numbers really start to move back up. You know, we've been getting mostly negative economic data today, including two big negative reports that came out. Nobody cares. You know, they, they grasp on the, you know, the few good pieces of news that come out every once in a while. But most of the data is bad. Anybody who wants to open their eyes and look can see that this economy, this bubble is, is, is deflating. And when the Fed has to acknowledge that, that it's, the economy is much weaker than they thought, then, right. you know, they're going to come back with more QE. That's why I'm still very Peter, bullish. Peter, yeah. having said that, one final point before I let you go. If you were at the press conference tomorrow, you could ask Janet Yellen a question. Uh, what would it be? Oh, I got a lot of questions to, to ask, uh, ask Janet Yellen. Uh, but, you know, I don't know that she could answer them. I mean, there's a big difference between Janet Yellen and, let's say, Alan Greenspan. Alan Greenspan, I think, actually understood economics and understood sound money. That's why he's now saying that QE was a failure and he's saying people should buy gold. I think Janet Yellen has been so brainwashed in Keynesianism her entire life that, you know, she actually thinks what she's doing is going to work. Alan Greenspan at least knew it wasn't going to work, but he did it anyway because he wanted to be liked. You know, he wanted to keep the party going. Right. Uh, but Janet Yellen doesn't understand any of these concepts. And I think it's very dangerous uh, to have her uh, as the Fed chairman going into what is going to be a very, very difficult period for America. Okay. All right, Peter Schiff, great to have you on the program today. And as Scott said, always consistent with the message. Uh, but we appreciate you coming on. We'll have you on again soon. Let's go to the pits right now. Talk about the 10-year yield. We talked about this a little bit on the air, um, Scott, and how you trade it in the wake of the Fed and, and where you think yields are going to go. Well, I think the, the important thing as far as yields are concerned, at least for the next month, is inflation and the outlook for inflation. And I don't know how you can say that crude oil being down over 50 percent since this summer is not fantastic if you want low inflation. I did, could not disagree with Peter Moore. Crude oil is about 